Mine's a teaching poster, and it's in uh, partnership with the University of New England at Armidale. They brought out to Ningen 79 Aussie African students over a three year period for me to train uh, in the water ponding and water spreading rehabilitation technique. Now they are from 29 different countries and there was quite a, a language barrier there from French to whatever to whatever to whatever and Chad fellows that actually couldn't speak any English at all. So there are some of the teaching barriers but by using a lot of pictures in demonstrating what the water ponding technique is, which is virtually on our duplex soil type, which is this, we can take that back to their best grazing country using the water ponding just by holding 10 centimetres of water with earth banks, 0.4 of a hectare area, and our water spreading, taking all the water out of our gullies and spreading it over our red country and um, their banks, 100 metres apart. Contour banks, but built from the bottom side. Totally different to being built from the top side. With a level sill cap every 100 metres and to let it go in. So those two methods had to be taught. Uh, intense theory for about half a day. And then once we got the history and showed them what they were actually going to do, we got them out onto staff and levels. We could take them right back to not laser gear, what we use now. And then once we had that up to a running, they could use that. Second day, took them out to the water spreading area and we took them along old banks and then gave them some country to actually survey, to actually do it. And then it's doing it on the ground is the key factor. The third day, we actually took them out onto the clay pan and, and each group of four said, here's three hectares, here's the staffing level, you start to lay it out. And that's how they really learnt. And then each one on that staffing level, they had to then get up in the grader, which builds the banks, and go round with the grader driver. And then once they'd built that, they'd virtually take an ownership of a part of Australia. And that was <laughs> their pond. So we said, here's the seed. We seeded as we do the construction. And then the monitoring, and I really honed in on this to them. If you don't monitor whatever you do back home, you won't get funding. And that's, a, that's across Australia wide. So took them through the monitoring section and then took them through the next step, the carbon, and put them through the um, how, to, how to take all the carbon because we can produce about eight tonnes per hectare per year of carbon using this water ponding technique. But just to jump back one fraction, practical demonstration. When they first jumped off that bus, there was usually about 30 in each group over each year, and to break that ice between all those different people because they were still getting to know each other. I had to get to know each other, so I just need two volunteers, quick volunteers, if you'd like to come forward. Here we go. Just a, a quick practical one, just to break the ice on everything. You can be 2% slope, that's beautiful. Where's somebody with a good set of lungs? Step forward, yes, here we go. Beautiful. So just to show them, yep, come around this side, blow across there. Oh, Start blowing. Really? Yep. Beautiful blow. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Sorry. That, that's what he's created on our clay pans. And then I add a bit of rain. You can blow. Keep blowing. Yeah, beautiful. beautiful. Yep. Yep. Keep going. A yep. bit more slow. A bit more slow. Yep. Beautiful. Oh, okay. It showed exactly how much penetrates our clay pans. And everybody that works in the rangeland, you've got a fantastic imagination. You've got to pick that. The old hummocks, the original soil. We've lost 30 centimetres of topsoil. Stay there. There we go. There we go. This is showing the Africans sort of what they're going to be doing for the next three days when I've got them. So you can blow it in. Yep. Oh, that's beautiful. You can drop it down if I can see it. Yep. That's what little ponds are actually holding. Just holding the water 10 centimetres in depth on the clay pan, and that's all we're after. And that's what I was just teaching them how to do. Thank you. Excellent job. Right. 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 Right.
great presentation. Um, what's the reality of people gone home having access to a grader? A grader? Yeah. The, the pictures they've sent back to me have been phenomenal. This one in Sudan, sort of um, East Sudan, um, her, it's the application to the government, she put in, I wanted a seven foot mesh fence with barb on top or armed guards every five ponds. <laughs> I thought, this has taken rehabilitation to the next level. <laughs> this is exciting. <laughs> she got the fence and the she sent back and it just disappears over the horizon. But they used little discs. Other photos they've sent back have been lines of rock. They've dug holes yeah. around that half a hectare area and just stood the rock up and then packed a bit of dirt and the water's sitting behind it. Yeah, wow. So yeah. it doesn't just have work. to be about grader. It doesn't have to be about yeah. a big 6 grader. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They, they've got the manpower. Yeah. So I took them back to that very basic level to bring them up to speed where, where we were yeah. on those two rehabilitation yeah. efforts. Yeah. But that can be just picked up. I could go in there and start training something there. It's, it's sort of adaptable anywhere. Right. Okay, thank you.